My guest today is photographer, entrepreneur, and social activist, Miss Ann Harriman. Now, one of the most widely shared photographers of this age. He is also the first black photographer in the 104-year history of British Vogue to shoot the cover of its September issue. Now, his strong reportage style and unique eye for narrative has captured the attention of editors and celebrities from around the world. Now, from documenting historic moments in history to photographing high-profile celebrities, including Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, Angelina Jolie and Jay-Z, even Tom Cruise and Julia Roberts, and even Rihanna, to name a few. Misson is a photographer of extraordinary range. Now, he's an Oscar-nominated film director with his live-action short film, The After, at this year's 96th Academy Award. The After is a gut-wrenching story about a man who grieves and who can't seem to get over a tragic event that happened in his life. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our very esteemed guest today, world-renowned photographer, social activist, and now Oscar-nominated film director, Miss Ann Harriman, to the show. Welcome. Ward, thank you so much for having me, sir. Well, it's an absolute honor for me, and uh, I have to ask, you are the writer and director of the Oscar-nominated short film, The After. Where did the inspiration come from to write this very powerful story? Well, I think... Um... Like many of us, 2020 was a tricky year. And, um, you know, I had a, a baby girl and then this this thing called COVID came into our lives and then George Floyd happened. And I think, you know, our mental health took a, a battering and it was everyone. You didn't need to ask how you're doing in 2020 because everyone was kind of shaky. Um, and I wanted to make a film that could be our bedfellow in understanding that it's okay to have invisible wounds. Um, I also wanted to make a film that um, showed the celestial nature of our little people, of children, how we, if we listen to them, if we see them, we, we can learn more from them than we could ever teach them. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of put all of those things on the screen. And I was lucky enough to get one of the great filmmakers um, producers, actors, everything, David Oyelowo, um, to, to decide to go on this journey with me and, and Nikki Bentham. And, 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 and then I got a, a, a very young and an incredibly talented screenwriter to help me put what's in my head into a, into a form that the industry can fully articulate, uh, JJ. Well, this is your first film to direct. Uh, did mm. you have any intentions of directing your very first screenplay? Um, I've loved film more than anything my whole life. And the thing about imposter syndrome and a lack of self-love, um, you sometimes think the things you love the most are not for you. And I, um, really thought that I would never have a place in the film industry because, you know, I'm neurodiverse. I can't spell, I can't write very well in the traditional educational sense of it, but I'm a real visual, visual storyteller. So when the opportunity came, you know, I photographed people like Steve McQueen, Liam Neeson, and they, they, they both said, you know, you, you, you could be a filmmaker. Um, and then my wife, who's always believed in me, said, why don't you give it a shot? And um, I had a conversation with my friends at Netflix and uh, yeah, the rest was history. Well, did you approach your film differently than your photography when it came to directing the after? Yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that compositionally, you know, as a, as a photographer, I, I know where I want to put the camera. I'm really sure of where the camera should be and what the lens should be and the lighting. So working with um, our extraordinary DOP, Cy Bell, and you may know his work from Peaky Blinders, it was really clear the visual language of the film. No, because photography for me is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a journey of solitude. It's me and my camera trying to find truth in the human condition. Filmmaking for me is the opposite of solitude. It is a hugely and beautifully collaborative experience. And I was like a sponge soaking up what 
the stunt workers were doing, how we handled security on set, the gaffers and all the sound design, the editing suite, I can go on all day. All of these men and women that they were the, that are the best in the world and have dedicated their lives to a specific craft, whether it's making blood on a knife look real. All of those things, it's incredible to see these craft men and women. And I felt like we were doing a symphony um, of creativity together. You know, I never gave it any thought that here you are, a world-renowned photographer, and when, you, when you're when you taking a, a photo, it's just you, mm. the camera, and that moment, as well as that subject. But mm. then with film, you're right. It's a huge collaborative effort of so many people that may never be recognized because of the film, because they work behind the scenes, but it took their part to make it happen. Yeah. And I, you know, if you look at uh, on my Instagram, I tag as many as Instagram allows me to just to remind them um, that we did it together. As soon as I knew about the Oscar shortlist and now nomination, I would tell my team that we did this. Not I did this. We did it because there's no way I will be here today without every single human that's part of this um, special little film. Well, I had a wonderful conversation with producer Nikki Bentham of Neon Films. How did you two connect? You know, we I had a, a few friends in the industry and one of them said, you've got to meet Nikki. I was like, Nikki, I, you know, I knew her work because she 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 just finished producing um, The Duke with Helen Mirren, which is a remarkable film. So I thought, why, why would this, you know, a, a incredible producer want to, you know, after making a feature, want to do a short. But we, we had a coffee and... Um, some somehow some way i persuaded her to take a chance on me and um she is one of the best producers in the world and and her body of work um speaks of real intention um in the, the sort of story she wants to tell and she 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 has been guiding me on this journey into film in a way that um i i desperately needed so I'm, i feel very lucky to have her when i uh, when i talked to nikki miss on i uh... I asked her, what was it that she saw uh, in oh, you? Because you had never, you <laughs> had never directed. And she said, you, because, you know, I'm thinking he's, he's going from photography to a moving picture. Hmm. And she said, there's just something about Miss An that she knew deep inside that you had what it took. You had the, uh, you had the story and, she had no qualms whatsoever to have oh. you come in and direct the short film. And see, I am a huge lover of short film mm. because they are so extraordinary with storytelling. But then adding within the after, you have phenomenal actor David Oyelowo, who is also not only the producer on the film, but he is the main character. What mm. was it like working with David on such a powerful film? Honestly, life changing. Um, you know, we, we have very similar backgrounds culturally. Nigerian men grew up in England, similar age. I've been a fan of him for two decades. I DM'd him on Instagram, almost knowing he would never respond because he must get thousands of messages. And that day he happened to see my message. He was a fan of my photography. And he, he came onto this project before we had a script which is crazy. This is a man that's been in an interstellar, who, you know, the, the extraordinary lead performing role in Selma and so many other films, the United Kingdom, I can go on and on. Um, the idea of David wanting to do a short is just ridiculous to me. And he said yes, straight away. And um, that was the beginning of a life changing journey, truly. Um, he lost, uh, he has lost both his parents and is, is still as many people who lose their parents are in, in, in this cycle of grief that, that, that goes away and comes back, usually when you least expect it. So it was a very raw and brave performance for him to give so much of his deep self. It went well beyond acting. And I think you probably felt that um, when you watched the film. Yeah, and, and I wanna just bring up the cinematography for a moment because you are a photographer. I noticed in the first part, maybe the first half of the film, 
Mm. It's very bright. It's mm -hmm. very sunny. Everything is beautiful. Uh, it's almost as if you're watching, you can almost feel the sunshine on your face. Yeah. And then after the event, then the cinematography starts to change to this more of a cool, this mm -hmm. gray tone that actually embodies uh, Deo's emotion of what he's going through. Was that, was that lighting done on purpose? Yeah, it's, it's so, and the grading. Yeah, the lighting and the, and the color grading and even the lens choices. Um, and I'm so glad you noticed that because uh, it's it's a subtle, nuanced thing, but I think it helps people stay in the emotional place they need to for this story to have maximum impact. I mean, when he's with his beautiful girl on this sunny day and doing what, you know, busy dads always try and do and mums is just do his best. You know, just do his best and, and, and try and appease the work life whilst trying to be the best father and husband that he can be. And I, I, I didn't want him to be a bad dad. It was so important for me that, you know, because it's so easy to put the bad dad on TV. You know, I wanted him to be a good guy that's just dealing with life because that's what people can relate to. You know, that there, there really is no villain as far as his him and his family are concerned. Um, and um David, you know, immerse himself in that so so honestly. You know, you being a photographer, I knew when I watched the film that lighting is so important. And even like you said, even the, and I'm sure the colorist was working very hard as well to bring to continue to mm. carry that emotion. And it's just those little things that you know the viewer may not notice. But it's just that secret, secret nuance that yeah. brings them along with the story. And I, yeah. di I did notice that you did not make David to be the, um, the villain in any way. And it's almost to me, the silent villain was the grief that yeah. was trying to overtake him when knowing that none of it was his fault. Yeah, yeah, and even the 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 assailant, the man with the knife. I made sure he was wearing a mask because we, so you know, so we didn't know what race or what religion or anything. It wasn't about that. It was it it was about something gets taken, and it's gone. You know? And I'm glad you did that because I yeah. believe that if you had shown the face of the assailant, yeah. people would have it would have changed it would have changed the emotion of the story. Because yes. then immediately the spirit of judgment from the audience yes. would have been brought in. And I'm glad that you, you, you prevented that from happening. Yeah, it, it was, it was very important. And also on the visuals, we shot, we, we shot this, which is unheard of for a short film on large format. You know, we shot this on a red monstro, which is crazy. Um, and um, that the image it gives it has so much dynamic range in terms of what you can do with color grading and also how you can shoot in broad daylight with with really harsh sunlight uh, as well. You know, because we only had five days to shoot this, so one of one of the great uh, privileges of um, having Netflix support this film is we basically shot it as a major as if it was a feature film. It just happened to be eighteen minutes long. <laughs> well, you know, I noticed that I noticed what I call the feature film look. I noticed yeah, yeah. it right off, but you bring up a good, you bring up a, an important point here. You filmed on the roof of a building with mm. harsh sunlight. Were you waiting for a particular time of day to get the right shot or did you have to use well, some type of shading? Well, I would love to say that we were waiting, but we had five days to make this, this film. And, you know, you know, there were a lot of extras for the, the, the big scene at the beginning. And, and, and you know, we, we were looking at clouds <laughs> and just think, we just got to go and trust in, again, the dynamic range um, um, of, of the image that we're capturing and what we can do in the edit as well to match up the, the ambient light. So there is continuity without getting too technical and, and it worked out just fine. Um, but it's, it was not a controlled environment. And I love that because it actually brings out the best in everyone. You know, when, when you're not a hundred percent sure, um, what's going to happen with certain dynamic aspects of creating art, 
And it just means that everyone's is, you know, like we've got our battle armor on and we're going to we're going to make we're going to fight the elements and create beautiful art. And that's basically what we did. You know, I learned from the character Deo played by David that life is precious. Mm. It's short and there are no guarantees in life. But if we focus on the ones we love more, life will have much more meaning. But yeah. Deo suffered with much regret after the incident in the film, correct? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with the time you have? What do you do with the time you have? You know, um, I just put my two girls to, 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 to sleep and, you know, every, every day now I, I just, I really try and be in the moment with them, you know, and, um, we don't know what fate is going to throw at any of us. We really don't. And, um, I hope this film reminds us to, to, to enjoy the stillness of love with those that we have in our lives. Um, because sometimes in this social media infused world of aspiration and showing so much of one's life everywhere, we forget to just feel the humans that love us and give and receive um in 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 a way that um goes beyond anything that could ever be posted online so i i hope that 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 came through in the film as well this film brings so many different emotions to the surface when the film begins you're 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 not really focusing on david so much but you're focusing on the beauty and the happiness of his daughter, you see sure. the beautiful smile of his wife, you see this family that loves one another, uh, has a great future together. Yeah. It's just it's it's just absolutely beautiful. But then you give the audience probably one of the most gut-wrenching moments in cinema that I've ever seen. What mm. was it like doing that scene? You know, I before even getting into that, I, <laughs> we, we, we did a, a screening and Jeff Bridges turned up and um, I, I lost my mind because I, there are few cinema idols I have um, beyond Jeff. I just adore the man. And um, I, I was sat two seats in front of him and, and I heard him scream. You're like, you know, just like verbally make noise. And I was like, oh, my God. And then when the next thing happened, I could again, I could hear. And I was like, my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done to Jeff Bridges? <laughs> you know, and I, I you know, I, I, I'm not, I've been in enough screenings where, you know, we, we once had a screening where somebody physically, you know, was, you know, collapsed, couldn't, couldn't, we had to, you know, help them, help them up. Um, the emotional punch of the opening of this film for many people, for different reasons, can be somewhat overwhelming. Now, I want to, you know, on the record, thank Netflix um, um, and Mensa, Fiona Lamptey in particular, for allowing me to go there. Because you can you imagine a movie exec looking at, forget the script, looking at the storyboard, you know, because we storyboarded everything, right? And, and just, <laughs> just like, uh, you want to put this to, to 230 million people? Are, are, you, are you kidding me? You know, so I really commend Netflix for believing in the totality of the story and allowing us to go there because it is a big ask to put that on the screen, especially for such a, a huge company like Netflix. And um, I also want to commend the um, our first, you know, first AD and and DOP because you know, when I visualized that I had a very specific, again, this is going back to composition, I, I needed the camera to be handheld um, slightly over the shoulder, but running unstabilized, right, with David, so you can feel the shake and you're drawn in, but, but also positioned in a way where the act of violence is not gratuitous. You see enough to know that it's all over, but it's not gratuitous. Right. And, 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 and you know, with a, with a lot of training and uh, practicing and rehearsing with the stunt uh, um the body doubles the stunt workers the extras everyone and of course david we managed to i think nail a very difficult 
um, you know, just technically a very difficult um, scene to put to 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 put on 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 camera. I watched your film, I think three times all the way through. I mm-hmm. went back and started cutting scene by scene, and I went to that moment, mm. and I played it v- as much frame by frame as I could because when I saw it the first time. I was like, well, okay, whoa, wait, what what happened? Because you had just explained that you did the unstabilized cameras, which made us feel as if we were in David's shoes exactly. running towards his family, which what a br- brilliant move that was. But as I played frame by frame, it didn't matter if you played it in normal speed or you were just looking at one frame at a time, it was still gut-wrenching. Yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah, and 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 there's you know visually they're 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 just sometimes the camera's got to bear witness to it, you know. It, but it, but it, you it, carried it, yeah. yeah yeah you ca- you carried and and here's what is amazing and this is what I love about filmmakers and and you are brilliant in this very moment. As fast as the scene was. Mm. You captured the absolute emotion of the mother. Mm. I mean, we we felt her. We felt that moment. We felt as if I would have done the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nikki, Nikki, and I spoke to a lot of mums <laughs> that have, have, have you know that have been in war zones or seen things that you no one needs to see, and 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 you know it's shocking how many stories there are of when when someone sees their baby go they don't think twice they don't think twice well i loved how you used another family in this film the ones riding in deo's car Mm. a family much like his Mm. but an embrace from an unlikely character helps him to finally start healing what did that moment mean to you in this film you know of all, I, I don't know how many thousands of emails, letters um, we've got since we've dropped this on Netflix, but of all the scenes, this is the one that gets people. That hug, whoo! I've seen grown men wail, you know, tough dudes, you know, because we, 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 you know, we, we, we show this to a really interesting selection of like test audiences and it really broke a lot of men, you know, men aren't always programmed to show any emotion. So, you know, look, what did it show to me? First of all, you know, the the young girl in it, her parents are not seeing her. She's completely unseen by her parents who are completely useless human beings. You know, I, I wrote them to be to, to, to be well, JJ really wrote them to be useless. I, I had the idea of them being useless and JJ really amplified that beautifully. I would say a lot of parents who need to pay attention to their babies don't uh, because life's busy or they've ended up being, you know, farming out their emotional responsibility to their child. And this child that was completely unseen saw David when he needed to be seen. And, And again, going back to the celestial, I think the closest thing human humanity has to the celestial to the otherworldly is within our children you know there's a reason i'm ambassador for save the children i believe they're as godly as anything on in creation so they know things that adults sometimes forget they sense things and i've I've had it with my two girls daily where they they say and feel things i'm like how so there's that and then there's also leave I, i left open to interpretation whether this was some kind of opening of a connection between his his own daughter um and and you know and him you know and those that are spiritual may believe that there was there was a real that hug was more than just a a a girl from this life it may have been something from another place altogether so i I, you know there's a lot there also him being left on the floor and the parents ignoring him. A lot of people 
that message me that do not live in urban centers saying, how could any, you know, we love your film, but no one would ever do that. I was like, I was like, have you ever lived in New York City? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to, to downtown LA? Have you, have you ever been to, you know, San Fran? Have you been to London, Paris? Every day I see that when I'm in an urban center. It's tragic. But you know what is so moving about that moment in your film? The audience at first is going to be is going to be thinking one sided. They're going to be thinking, mm -hmm. "Ah, Deo needed that so so much. What a blessed young girl to to just give him a hug." Mm -hmm. But on the other end, mm -hmm. she was giving him what she also wanted from her parents desperately, desperately. De listen, chronic depression in under sixteen year olds is the highest it's ever been. You know, the, the, they're not being seen. And um, there, there is that, you know, there, you know, the, 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 this film, I, I, and I didn't plan it this way, but the world has got to a place today where I believe that this film may, may, may really, really be needed as far more than just entertainment. You know, I have, I have heard that. I will say that this is the first year in which the majority, I think at least four out of five of the live action shorts are very emotional. Mm. Um, they bring, they bring tears to your eyes, mm. but there's a moment in your film. And I talked to Nikki and I think she was a little surprised that I actually noticed this uh, uh -oh. after the hug. Yes. Once, once Dayo got up, yeah. He got back in his car. Yeah. And the reason why at the beginning, when I told you that I had noticed how your film just starts off with this beautiful, sunny, bright yeah. day, which yeah. also signifies how beautiful life can be and how your cinematography, your lighting changes to this more of this gray tone, this, this depressive grief type. But then, and this is where the tears came into my eyes. Mm. Dayo is sitting in his car. He has the window down and he looks up and all of a sudden you see this ray mm. of sunlight touch his face. And that's when I had tears in my eyes. I, I'm getting tears in my eyes now just thinking about it because you book ended this film mm -hmm. with a ray of light. Yeah, it's yeah. It's uh, I, I'm left speechless by how things um, what you can do with the moving image and the right team. And, and with that ray of light, we held again, really tight close up, you know, um, and we hold for much longer than than I would say you see these days um, in, in, in the moving image. Um, but we, you need to sometimes you need to let 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 the scene breathe right and um then this song by birdie who's a great british singer songwriter um let it all go you know and we we we, we had to really fight to get the song because it's you know it's had 100 million streams and youtube's a huge hit but we managed to get hold of it and it was a, just a, a perfect song to to accompany um the release you know of the weight that this poor man had been carrying for too long and it was a perfect choice. I mean, at, when, I, when I saw the scene, the song at first for me did not register because I was focused yep. on Deo. And I was focused on his emotion and where just at that very glimpse, his healing mm. started. But then when I was watching it a second time, I'm, I'm then I'm listening to the song and I'm like, wait a minute. So that's when I paused it. And went on Spotify to listen to the song in its entirety. And I was just like, oh my gosh. There ha I don't think I've ever seen a film in which a moment and a soundtrack sy synergistically came together in the most perfect way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That song was a big part of my own mental health journey. You know, you know when you have your low moments? I, I, I use music playlists to... To lift me up and there's a song called harvest moon by neil young that kind of helps me when i'm simmering and then this one um by birdie uh just helps me when when i i'm just feeling like hope has left the room 
you know so it was a it was a personal song for me and my journey and i i i really wanted it to be in this film you know as powerful as gut-wrenching your film is this film ha- in my mind has the power to bring hope to millions who have may have suffered a traumatic loss mm-hmm. uh, not knowing what to do with that grief you know there was there was a series last year on Prime called Three Pines. And I'll always remember the first episode because the detective in the in the first episode said, because they were somebody had mentioned the word grief. Mm-hmm. And he said, Well, grief is is just love looking for a place to go. Mm-hmm. And that's what Deo, I think, mm-hmm. in that very ending, that's where healing began. Yes. Yes. Beautifully said. You are a poet, sir. Beautifully said. Well, I will say this. The after, according to many leading entertainment publications, seems to be the front runner to win the Oscar in the best live action short category. Misan, how does that make you feel? This is deeply uncharted territory for me. My first day um, as a director on any film set was day one of making the after. I have no training in filmmaking, never went to film school. I barely knew what language to use on set. So if, to, to be sat here as an Oscar nominee, um, to be in a few days, you know, with Spielberg and Scorsese and so many others um, at the nominees luncheon is something that my operating system literally cannot process. But more than that, I'm whatever happens, is in the hands of fate. What has happened is that this film has spoken to people in a way that I believe the universe conspired to have me hold that lens and find a merry tribe of people that needed to tell this story. Well, I will say this, Miss An, I am looking forward to your first feature film. (laughs) You, You have proven that you have the eye you have the vision within you. As much as you've done incredible work with, with steel pictures, you're now putting them together frame by frame, and I literally will sit on the edge of my seat waiting for your next project. Thank you, sir. I, I hope I get the opportunity to do that. Well, I will have to ask you because uh, I under, you know I know how important the Oscar luncheon is. Is there a particular nominee that you desire to meet that you may have not photographed or talked to yet? <laughs> I think I think Marty and 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 Robert De Niro and Steven Spielberg are kind of hard for me to to not lose my mind over, um, only because if you look at their combined body of work, um, my God, you know it's 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 shaped so much of what cinema is forget for me personally but as as a totality of an industry um kerry mulligan i i just want to applaud her or uh, and and sandra huller on just, it, 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 they're <laughs> in anatomy of a fall and maestro i i just i the, the performances just blew my mind simply blew my mind uh, and of course lily gladstone so you know i i i will be the ultimate fanboy but i think the the, the senior veteran filmmakers and, um, you know, Mr. Spielberg and Scorsese, I, I will be uh, very, very happy to, to, to breathe the same oxygen as them. Well, I will, I will say this, and I'm just going to put it out there by faith, that uh, I, I know, I'm not even going to say I, I believe, I know. Ms. Hunt, you have the talent, the vision that one day you could be nominated for for best actor. I mean, best director. <laughs> oh, I'll take it. <laughs> listen, listen, thank you, Ward. And, and you know, I, I, I grew up, um, film for me was never about entertainment. It was survival. Film allowed me to decode and deconstruct why I'm here and to understand how to look toward the sunset and understand how beautiful the horizon could be. It is, it is, it is, you know, the, 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 the moving image for me has been the engine room of self-love. 
Um, so I'm going to pour. I'm 46 years old. And for the rest of my life, as long as they allow me to hold a camera, I'm going to pour that into the stories that I will try and conjure up. Well, Ms. On, I, I am, it's been an absolute honor. <laughs> well, thank you. Before um, you go, I'll say, I'll say one more thing to the parents that are listening to this. You know, I am, um, uh, you know, I'm on this, this spectrum, this, this autism spectrum, this neurodiverse spectrum, as it's described. Um, I dropped out of university. I failed every exam I ever took. Um, everything changed for me in my forties. So, um, if you have children that are different, please, for God's sake, um, help them recognize the, the, the beauty in, a, a diverse mind because they may have within their minds the very thing that can make this place a brighter place. Um, and also for the men and women that are in their 40s, 30s, whatever, that are not happy with where they are, I'm living proof that it's never too late to take the road less traveled. Listen to that little voice that's whispering to you on where you need to be. That's right, because we blossom when we're out of our comfort zone and we need to have the the foresight and the insight of our children. And like you said, you know, we we have we have children. They can be a bit different, but mm -hmm. you know, God created everybody different for a reason. It, we're a puzzle that should be fitting together and not fighting one another. And uh, ladies and gentlemen. The Oscar-nominated short film, The After, is creating the strongest Oscar buzz of all short films this season. The After is a powerful film and a must-see for every lover of cinema. So when you get the chance to see it, anchor yourself in its emotion. This way you won't miss the most important elements of this film, just like I noticed. Now, learn to love those around you more as, is, as in this life. We're just a mere vapor. But I want to thank you, Miss An, for your time today, sharing your very powerful film. And I have to say, you have such a beautiful spirit and a beautiful soul. Thank you, sir. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, you can catch all the replays of our interviews with the top film directors, producers, and screenwriters, as well as actors and more on our website, bondoncinema.com. We're also available on YouTube and a dozen audio platforms as well. So I want to thank you for watching and listening. And as for me, I'll see you at the movies and probably from the red carpet.